Let's read Ben Franklin and the Magic Squares. Ye Colonies, 1750. Over 200 years ago, when America was just 13 colonies, there lived a super smart guy. You may have heard of him. His name was Benjamin Franklin, but most people called him Ben. This story is about how Ben invented magic squares. But first, there are a few things you need to know about this great man. Ben Franklin wasn't smart for nothing. He put his big brain to good use. He was always thinking and writing and inventing cool things even when he was a kid. When he was 11 years old, Ben jumped into a lake holding on to a kite. The kite was pulled by the wind. Ben was pulled by the kite. The kite flew a whole mile with Ben holding on tight. That same year, Ben wanted to swim faster than anyone, so he made flippers for his hands and feet. They worked. People still use a version of Ben's flippers today. Flippers, 1717. As Ben grew older, he kept thinking and writing and inventing. When he was 23, he wrote and printed a newspaper called the Pennsylvania Gazette. The Pennsylvania Gazette, first edition, 1729. People loved it. When he was 26, Ben wrote and printed a book called Poor Richard's Almanac. See, Poor Richard's Almanac, 1st edition, 1732. An almanac is a book of useful information, from weather predictions and advertisements to important dates. Ben's almanacs had even more things in them. There were witty sayings, witty means clever, and fun puzzles. You know what fun means. People still use many of Ben's sayings today. Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Never put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Fish and visitors stink in three days. There was never a good war or a bad peace. Nothing is certain but death and taxes. Lost time is never found again. <clears throat> When Ben was 36, he invented a special stove. It kept homes warmer, <clears throat> warmer than a fire in a fireplace, and burned less wood. Everyone was amazed. People still use Franklin stoves today. Franklin stove, 1742. Ben never outgrew his love of kites. When he was 46, he tied a key to a kite string and flew the kite in a thunderstorm. That this was not a safe thing to do. But Ben did find out that lightning was made of electricity. And electricity is used today as well. Experiments with Electricity, 1752. Once Ben even invented a special rocking chair. It had a fan on top. Ben rocked back and forth and the fan swished this way and that. It really kept the flies off his head. No one else ever used this invention, not in Ben's time and not in ours. Over the years, Ben also started America's first library, the Library Company of Philadelphia, 1731, America's first fire station, Union Fire Company, 1736, and America's first hospital, too, Pennsylvania Hospital, 1751. He even helped Thomas Jefferson write and rewrite the Declaration of Independence in 1776. So, you get the idea that uh, Ben Franklin was a super busy guy, right? Then you are ready for the story of the Magic Squares. It all started in the middle of Ben's life in 1736. That year, he became a clerk for the Pennsylvania Col Colonial Assembly. The Assembly was a group of men who made laws for the colony of Pennsylvania. A clerk was the person who kept track of all the important decisions they made. The guys in the Assembly chose Ben to be a clerk because they knew he was super smart and a great writer. Ben listened carefully to the men in the Assembly. He couldn't write anything down until they agreed on something, so Ben waited and waited. 
For days he listened to long arguments about which laws were good and which laws were bad. For more days Ben listened to fights about taxes and bills. And for even more days Ben listened to disagreements about numbers and money, city streets, and state laws. Until one day... Oh, look, he fell asleep. The members of the assembly were not happy. Mr. Franklin, one of them said loudly. Ben woke up. He was very embarrassed. I am so sorry, he said. Everyone went back to work. The men argued. Ben listened and listened. He kept his ears open and his eyes open. It was very hard. Day turned into night, and the assemblymen still argued. Ben found it was easier to stay awake if his hands were busy. He twiddled his thumb. He tickled his nose with his quill pen. He dipped his pen in ink and started to doodle. Ben doodled people. Ben doodled new inventions. Ben even doodled a doodle of his pet squirrel, Skug. The men in the assembly were still arguing, so Ben decided to doodle a math problem. He drew a square. Then he drew two lines going up and down and two lines going left and right. This made nine boxes in one big box. Ben wrote a different number in each box. He stared at the box of numbers. He waited for an idea to pop into his head. Ben noticed something. When he added the numbers in the first row, they equaled 15. When he added the numbers in the first column, they equaled 15 as well. Now Ben wondered if he could make the numbers add up to 15, no matter which row or column he picked. What if they even added up to 15 in a diagonal line? That would be more than a math puzzle. It would be a magic square. Ben started arranging the numbers, sorting the numbers, and rearranging the numbers. Ben was thinking so hard about his magic square that he was not sleepy at all. Finally, he saw, ooh, sorry, finally he saw what needed to be done. First, he wrote a one in the center box of the top row. Next, he wrote a two in the last box of the third row. He wrote a three in the first box of the second row. Then Ben wrote four in the bottom box of the first column. He wrote a five in the box of the center, then a six in the third box of the first row. Under the six, Ben wrote a seven. Ben wrote an eight inside the first box of the top row. Finally, he wrote a nine in the only box left. Was it a magic square? Ben started adding. Each row and column added up to 15. Even the diagonals added up to 15. It's magically magic, Ben shouted. He had made a magic square. After that, Ben never dozed off at the assembly again. Instead, he doodled magic squares until either the assemblyman finally made a decision or he had a good idea of his own for them. How about lights on all of the streets so people can see at night? Streetlight Bill enacted 1751, renewed 1756. Ben went on to publish his magic squares in his newspaper and almanacs. People loved figuring out the magic answers, and they still do. Now, this is directions for how to make your own magic square. Draw a square. Draw a tic-tac board inside the square. Start with number one. Put it in the middle of the top row. Put the number two in the box that's directly above and to the right of the one. Okay, wait, hold it. You're probably saying there is no box above and to the right of the one. That's true. So here's what you do. Since there's no box above the one, drop down to the bottom of the column that holds the one. Now move one square to the right, and there you go. Put your number two there. D. Now, Okay, now you're ready for the number three. So repeat step C. Look for the box above and to the right. Move up one row, and then, yep, you're correct. There's no box to the right. What do you do? Move that three to the beginning of the row above the two, like this. Now you're ready for the number four. Just look above and to the right again. Now, yes, you're correct again. There's already a number in the box. So what do you do? 
Any time there's a number already in the box you want, just put the next number in the box below the number you just wrote. So put the three below the, the four below the three. Now for the numbers five through nine, always look for the box above and to the right. If you get stuck, go step by step. If there's no box above, drop down to the bottom of the column, then move to the right. If there's no box to the right, move to the beginning of the row, and so on. Ta-da! Your magic square. What makes it magic? Add the numbers in each of the rows. Now add each of the columns. And finally, add each of the diagonals. What do you get? Fifteen! The perfect magic square. There are many ways to make magic squares. Big ones and little ones. Try starting with nine and working down to one. This time, the nine goes in the middle of the top row instead of the one. And um, here's the author's note. Well, no one knows exactly how or exactly when Ben Franklin came up with magic squares, but we do know these things. He really did get bored when he was a clerk in the Pennsylvania Colonial Assembly, 1736 to 1751. He definitely made magic squares in 1736 and 1737. He called the magic square his, quote, most magically magical magic squares, unquote. He really invented and made up all the things in this book, plus a lot more. He really did have a pet squirrel named Skug. And that, my friends, was Benjamin Franklin and the magic squares. Why don't you go make a magic square yourself?